Hey gang, in today's Electronics and More video, I'm going to show you how you can make a smoke activated relay. You're going to need a smoke alarm like you see here. It doesn't have to be exactly this type. This is an older model. I found this for a dollar. It's made by FireX. This was picked up at a restore in my area. Just make sure it has a 9 volt battery. And you're also going to require this circuit right here. Now I'm going to show you the schematic quickly, but I do have a video which is located in the video description area, or you can click right over here with the circle with the eye, and a drop down menu will appear, and you'll get a lot more information on the circuit. I don't want to get too much into the circuit in this video because I'd rather you go back to the other video and it explains everything very well. You're going to need a 5818 shot key diode, 2200 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and you can rate these around 16 volts. Over here is a 39K quarter watt resistor. You're going to need an NPN transistor, a TO92. And it's a BC547, 2N2222, 2N3904, 2N4401. All of these will work just fine. You're going to need a 9 volt relay. I'll show you up close what it looks like. And you're also going to need a 1N4003 rectifier diode. These values here can be adjusted for a longer or shorter duration so you're definitely going to want to refer to my other video. This is what the relay looks like right here. It's made by Songle, S-O-N-G-L-E. You can see over here it says 09 VDC and it has 10 amp relay contacts and you can control an AC load or a DC load. Just make sure that the wires are 16 gauge if you're going to be handling up to the limit, which is 10 amps. You do not want to have small wires controlling a 10 amp load. Now for my purpose, I have around 20 gauge wire because I'm only going to be controlling a very small fan. The capacitor here I found from Scrap Electronics. I'll place a link for you in the video description area where you can find these relays, capacitors, diodes, and all kinds of electronic components at a great price. And if you have not seen the video review for this digital multimeter, I'll also place a link to that video in the video description area. I checked YouTube and there is no other videos showing a smoke activated relay, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to show you how to make one. How this works, as soon as smoke is detected within this chamber with the americium 241 radioactive pellet, the relay on this board will trigger. When that relay triggers, you'll be able to take the output right over here, connect it up to a siren. It could be a fan to blow smoke away. So this might be very useful if you're making a soldering box where you don't want to have the fumes in your face, so you can mount this up high so all the soldering fumes will rise up. Once there's enough fumes, what'll happen? A fan will turn on, forcing all the fumes out of that box. You can also have this turn on a solenoid, which would supply water to put out a fire. Now the way I have it set up, using the 2200 microfarad and 39K, it's going to give you about three minutes of runtime on this relay if this is triggered once. So say a small amount of smoke is detected and then it dissipates, this will remain on for three full minutes. If there's a lot of smoke, this will continue to run. After the smoke is all gone, it will stay on for the three minutes. This is an extremely, extremely useful circuit, which I'm sure many of my viewers will find very good use for. Once you have the circuit all put together, the next thing you're going to do, disassemble the smoke alarm, over here is a piezo disc or wafer. This is where the sound or the beeping comes out of for the smoke alarm. If you look right over here, there's a metal tip sticking up, one in the middle. That says feedback, which goes in the center. Over here is R7, and that says R, it looks like RO. And one goes here, and the other goes on the outside. This was positioned just like that and then the cover went down on top. For this purpose, I'm not going to be using the sound part, so I'm going to be removing this. Some of you may have a little piezo element mounted on the board, 
and that's where you're going to be tapping off of. What you're going to do is once the smoke alarm has been opened, you're going to take your digital multimeter, place it on a low DC voltage range. Okay, you should be able to see that. You're going to take the negative probe or the black, connect up a jumper wire to that, just like you see right over here. And we're going to take that and connect it to the negative of the 9 volt battery. Or you can follow the black wire to the board and connect the clip to that point. Pop the battery out. All right, here's your negative. Should grab OK. All right. Once that's done, the next step is you're going to push the test button on the smoke alarm and you're going to probe the points where the piezo wafer was or the piezo element that's mounted on your board and you're going to probe each one of these points. What we're going to be looking for is a positive voltage on the digital multimeter once you push the test button. So you're going to probe each one of these and look for a positive voltage. And you can see it's going between two and a half and four and a half volts. And it only runs for a little bit and it stops. Maybe four seconds. On the feedback, nothing. Let's go over to this one. And that's the same. Not as high voltage. Let's go back to this one it again. That's a little higher. So I'm taking the one that's around four and a half volts. Look for the highest voltage. You can also probe the board and look for a location where the voltage goes high when you push the test button. That's exactly where you're going to want to tie in, which is this point right over here. And my purple wire over here is going to be right here in this diagram. And we're going to connect it right on here. All the grounds are connected together with the black wire and that goes to the negative on the battery. Over here is the two outputs which is these two black wires and the positive 9 volts is the red wire. I'm going to take the red wire connect it to the positive of the battery, the black to the negative. I'm going to take the purple and connect it right over here where I had the voltage show up of 4.5 volts. Let me connect everything up using jumper wires and then I'm going to give you a quick demo. Okay, it's all connected up. The positive of the 9 volt battery connects to the red on the delay off circuit. The negative of the battery goes to the black wire or the negative of the delay off circuit. Over here is your relay contacts and it's connected to my digital meter on a continuity alarm setting. So once this triggers, you're going to hear the alarm. The input into the delay off circuit is right here with the purple, goes through the yellow wire, right to that point here. What I'm going to do now is take a match, I'm going to light it, blow it out, allow all the smoke to be right next to this chamber so it's detected, and then you're going to hear the continuity alarm come on. Once the continuity alarm comes on, I'm going to fast forward the video because you're not going to want to wait almost three minutes for this to click off. Here we go. Alright, so this is going to run now for around three minutes. Even with the smoke cleared away from this chamber, this would normally be off. You would not hear this sounding anymore, but the relay is going to remain on. Any second now, this should be turning off. There you go. Turned off. Now we're ready to go again. Another event of smoke would reset it all over again. There is one more thing I wanted to mention. I have an excellent video showing how you can make a shock sensor using one of these piezo wafers or discs. You're definitely going to want to check it out. The link is in the video description area or you can click right over here on the circle with the eye 
and you'll see it on the drop down menu. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.